There is this famous Henry Ford's quote. If, if I would ask my customers what do they want, they would say faster horse. And if I look into my pocket and see this amazing device, the mobile phone, or my laptop where I work on every day, that I can do these so amazing things. I can talk to my friends, I can store data, I have tons of different apps that help me to be healthier, to do all kinds of different stuff. It's amazing how you thought, like, how amazing this device is, like, really. And when I ask myself, what do I want out of it, like, the only thing I can think of is faster, bigger screen, better resolution, basically, faster horse. So, but I'm going to talk today about digital reality, that combination of VR and AR. Who of you is common with the term about digital reality? Virtual reality, augmented reality. One, two, there, there must be more, <laughs> like five, 10, 10%, 10 maybe more. Okay, good. Uh, digital reality, instead of being in the screen and looking on things, promises completely different future. It promises future where boundaries between existing world, physical world, and virtual world are deleted. It's a future where we immersively can interact with digital world or all, all around us on a, for example, Microsoft HoloLenses program, or we can completely dive in in a fully virtual world that's completely different than watching something on the screen, but that allows us to experience the environment. So, and technology companies all around the world, especially Silicon Valley, is going mad. Like, that's the next big thing. Something, uh, something that's gonna change the way we do so many things. Example, if I would learn about Iceland's geography, I would go on Wikipedia and read about it, and probably see some pictures later on some Google images. But just compare it with possibility on moving to the virtual space in diving into Iceland's mountains, seeing the landscape, hearing the puffin burns all around you, feeling the wind coming from every side to you, and maybe even smelling the fresh air. Imagine, just think about the experience and think about how it could change your perception of the thing you are, instead of reading, experiencing. And think about how we make the daily decisions and, and actually how, even though there is great web solutions like when, when I choose hotel, booking.com or Airbnb, but like, think about it, you can virtually jump into the space. Like, how better decision that would be for us as a customer. Like, and this is the famous Mark Zuckerberg slide from F8 conference. Uh, and here he's putting the evolution of uh, virtual communication in perspective. It all started with a text in the early 90s. In seeing from Facebook data, we are driving to the more video-driven communication. So what's the next step? We, it's going to more and more immersive experience. So, and the Facebook's also betting that the next step around 2020, it's digital reality. We will be looking to each other, communicating, consuming information and, and doing things on a virtual space, on immersive, with immersive experience. And maybe that's next. Maybe that's the next big wave. Maybe that's why the technology companies is going mad. So, but what I would really love to stress out in my presentation, um, when we look on digital reality, we shouldn't be looking, since it's still coming, we shouldn't be looking on some specific de device like Samsung Gear or Oculus Rift or some specific app. It's not about device anymore. It's about experience. It's about unlocking how we as human beings interact with virtual world, really. It's about experience. It's not about specific device. What makes you think that you are here right now? Like, think about the idea. How you know that you are here? This is the matrix picture, so you see, the, you see where I'm going. You know that you are here because your brains tell you so. And why your brains tell you so? Because human beings have five senses that sends the information to our brain. You, s you see things around, you can touch, you, s you feel that you are here, you have kinesthetic, uh, you can hear, 
Uh, you can smell, and if you would be drinking coffee, uh, simulating three of those senses, you change the perception of reality. The perception has changed, and virtual reality can become something we interact with like in the real life. The feelings start to grow. Um, but not to, not to bother you with the ideas that in the future we will live in the matrix and we'll have something behind our head or, 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 or something like that. Uh, I hope that digital reality is not about changing, like building a virtual world where we enter and where we live in. It's about building better, better, better virtual solutions that allows for us as a human beings to live more productive, more better lives, to make better decisions, to consume information better, to understand things better, to interact virtually better, to work better online. We work on Skype right now. We could work, we could be talking virtually to each other's avatars here. Um, and because of that promise that this could technology could change how we do almost everything on our digital space, it shouldn't be considered as a luxury. Uh, it should be considered more as a necessity, something that eventually will come. Uh, um, and why now? Uh, actually, virtual reality uh, has been around uh, since uh, early 1950s. And this is the fir first device that was actually tried to create, because this, this idea about being able to virtually be in the space has been uh, like since uh, it's, it's old. It's not new. Uh, and there were a lot of tries to get it real because the idea is so cool. And even in 1996, the Hasbro, the big gaming company, uh, they invested 57 million. I I imagine in, in, in mid 90s, 57 million invested in developing the house virtual reality kit that they planned to ship to the people, sell it uh, so they can ho at home play some kind of virtual reality games. Uh, they closed the program within the two years. Um, but then, in 2007, this amazing device came around. And it came around with massive improvements in screen resolution and, uh, and on pr uh, processing systems. And it eventually allowed, in 2014, Lucky Palmer to develop the first really immersive virtual reality headset that finally gave that experience. Wow, you put on and you, you, you can see that the future is coming. You are in different environment. You suddenly start to feel different. You absorb things, uh, things differently. Um, and, and, if we, and so it's not only the technology people who are going a bit mad about this. It's also investors. Uh, if you look on the first quarter of 2015, it's the best funded technology area. Uh, 500 million should be invested in tech startups uh, who build VR, uh, VR stuff and AR stuff. So it's, uh, they've been uh, doing pretty good. So, but I'm telling so many good things about potentially immersive world where we interact with technology. It's here, I touch it, or I put some kind of headset on and I can jump to places. Um, but so, so is there something today? So should consumer or should, if you consider yourself as a consumer, should you care? The answer is no, <laughs> because it's simply not ready yet. And there's simply few key steps to be sold. So to make it available for the consumer market, even being more about virtual reality, when we put the virtual reality headset on, because it's more ahead than augmented reality. Um, there's more technology questions to be sold on that. And so it's five years behind VR. Um, Right now, it's a creative presentation too. If you go in the exhibitions around the world, you will see at least five to 10 stands with something like VR content and especially uh, real estate, uh, hospitality, um, or our own uh, de that's data center goes to exhibition and, uh, and, and shows their speed. So it's a creative presentation too that could be used in various ways uh, because you create this uh, content for this one specific device. You, you provide the consum consuming power that it needs and, and the experience is, uh, is quite good and you can already simulate the, uh, of course, audio. We have 3D audio systems, vision. You can check how we are right now looks. Uh, on a for, uh, on a on a Samsung Gear, or, or you can even simulate touch because there are devices that you put on and that 
bring, uh, send you electricity. So stuff, stuff are out there, and there are individual solutions that could be used as a creative presentation devices. And um, yeah, second is the professional market uh, because uh, to to build a virtual reality environment, we have to build some kind of environment around us. It's not 2D something. So architects who already model in a 3D Max uh, who could easily transform their their model into t into the into uh, virtual reality and walk around their new development or new thing they are building, or give it to the client to test it. And I spoke with a few engineers and architects in uh, in London, and and they already like their their, their reaction is like it changes the percep perception of how we view our projects. Because when you look on the screen, it's one. When you put the glasses on and you really walk around the corner and you start to understand how you're going to build this corner, how you're going to design it, it changes a bit. And it changes a lot, actually. And the third, I called it a niche platform. I don't know how gaming is a niche, but <laughs> uh, gaming, adult movie, is going mad. Like There's games more and more coming out. Gamers already have huge computers that they can attach Oculus Rift on. The quality is quite OK. Where everybody's waiting for the next Oculus version, and 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 uh, adult movies. First uh, adult movie virtual reality uh, sites are being launched, and they are becoming more and more popular. And uh, if you write on the YouTube, like people's reactions, you <laughs> you will have fun. So uh, um, the VR is the virtual reality, augmented reality, the digital reality's potential is so big because it adds us senses to the communication. It adds the digital world sense. You feel, you touch it. And probably soon you will not be wearing your digital reality headsets, but maybe your kids will. And then a few years later, you will follow. So it's, de it's definitely coming. And if you want to see what the future is bringing out for us, uh, I would recommend to keep an eye those well-funded Silicon Valley and Artillery CL3 and other guys uh, who is trying to solve those questions and be the first ones who bring out really immersive experiences and make it for uh, usable for the uh, for the consumer and usable for the companies.